Is this movie better than Star Wars The Force Awakens? Yes. Is it better than Star Wars The Last Jedi? Hell yes. But how good is it? Let's see. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. I really do appreciate it. And this is your first time finding me and you want more movie reviews, trailer reactions, me responding to entertainment news or doing television recaps, please right now click on that subscribe button and also the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and you will be on your way. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is here. A lot of people have been salivating at the mouth waiting for this film to be released because it wraps everything up. Some people just don't care because they were disappointed with the last film Star Wars The Last Jedi as I was now this film is being directed by Mr. J.J. Abrams and if there's a small chance that you don't know who he is he did Star Wars The Force Awakens that came out in 2015 he also did Mission Impossible 3 which is one of my favorite Mission Impossible movies Super 8 and also the rebooted Star Trek that came out in 2009 and Star Trek Into the Darkness so he knows what he's doing for the most part behind the camera and I can easily say that I am a fan of his work. So when it comes to the Star Wars franchise, I believe that the original trilogy is universally praised as the best out of the three. And when it comes to this new trilogy, the Star Wars The Force Awakens, I thought it was good. I had a great time. I actually paid to go see it three times in the theater because I was just so excited that we were getting a new Star Wars movie. But at the same time, I felt that it copied a little bit too much after A New Hope Episode 4. And then we have Star Wars The Last Jedi, and my goodness gracious. I mean, I was just so disappointed with that film, just what they did with the character Luke, what they did with Ray, what they did with everything Canto Bite. I mean, the list goes on. I really don't want to talk about it. So I really meant what I said at the very beginning of this video that, you know, this film, The Rise of Skywalker, is better than those two films by far across the board. Now, if you've never heard of Star Wars before, you just want to tune into this review and have no idea what this movie is about, let me tell you. The surviving resistance faces the First Order once more in the final chapter of the Skywalker saga. And just so that you're aware, I am a casual Star Wars fan. I am not a diehard Star Wars fan. So I was lucky enough to be able to see this film early, but I did not see it Monday night during the Hollywood premiere with all the cast and crew. And just like any big blockbuster tentpole film, there is a social media embargo that lifts right after the premiere ends where people can go to Twitter, Instagram, or drop a 60 second YouTube video just giving their initial thoughts, their initial reactions of what they thought the film is without going into any plot, story, or spoilers, or anything like that. And this time, yes, you know, I did check out a number of those reactions. And something that was just common that I kept coming across was a few people kept saying that, you know, hey, the first 20 minutes was rough. It was hard to get started. It, it was slow in the beginning or the pace was off. I mean, that's fine. Everyone is entitled to their opinions, but I, I couldn't disagree anymore. I mean, I really did enjoy this film. And the first 20 or 30 minutes to me was great. I mean, as soon as the film started, we get Kylo Ren running around kicking a bunch of ass. And then we have Chewie. Poe Dameron and Finn flying through space doing things with light speed that I've never seen before in any Star Wars film and I don't want to spoil it here and that's great and then another thing we get Carrie Fisher and Rey doing their training she's trying to become the best Jedi that she can be I'm loving it I'm eating this all up so early on I was like what are these people talking about the first 20 minutes or so is great and let's just talk about Rey's training because that is one of the things that did frustrate me in Star Wars The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens is she she has all this force power and she's able to do this and the force awakens she was able to you know stand up toe to toe with Kylo Ren and I'm just like wait a minute that just makes no sense I mean I understand that she is force sensitive and she has these powers and there may be something with lineage we don't really know her backstory but the way they tackle Ray's film played by Daisy Ridley you know in this movie The Rise of Skywalker with the training I ate it all up I loved it I was like okay this is what I wanted to see as far as trending I actually felt without them 
even showing too much or just being an exposition dump, I felt that, you know, we got a nice taste of her training and really show how power she powerful she is and everything that she can do with the force i felt that it was earned as it was not earned in the previous films and that frustrated me in the past but it's something that jj abrams knocked out of the park as far as this is concerned something else that i liked in this film was how they handled carrie fisher now I mean, she's Leia in the movie. Now, unfortunately, rest in peace, my sister. You know, she passed away uh, about a year and a half ago, two years. If my dates are incorrect, please, you know, forgive me. But I was really wondering, okay, she passed away in the middle of filming, to my understanding, or they was not able to film everything they wanted, you know, with her character, Carrie Fisher. So how are they going to handle that, you know, in this, this, final se this final episode, episode nine of The Rise of Skywalker? I thought they handled it very well initially i was saying to myself okay this is clearly forced and shoot in but as that as a particular scene played out and fleshed itself out i thought it was very organic and i thought it worked within the story you know it, it flowed like it, it was just very smooth okay you mean you know i i, I really liked it i'm smiling i'm kind of giddy I, I thought it was very brilliant with uh jj abrams did with the writing there and so and also chris is it chris terrio um yeah i want to make sure i give him credit yeah uh yeah chris terrio um, what they did with the writing as far as that's concerned, you know, with her real life death and then infusing that into the plot, into the story with the rise of Skywalker, you know, th they did a very great job there. Uh, something else that I liked is all the cameos in this movie. Um, I was not able to catch all of them. And let me just go ahead and give an example. Like the Star Wars movie, the uh, Rogue One. OK, we all know that that film ends like seconds before episode four, A New Hope. And in the Rogue One, as they're. You know, in the final battle scene, there are shots of people, you know, in the resistance that are not here anymore. They passed away that were in the original trilogy that were in A New Hope. And if you've seen that and you know their faces and you, you know their character, you know, that's something that signature like, oh, my gosh, they're bringing those characters back or they use that old footage. They did that with a, a couple of scenes in this movie, The Rise of Skywalker. I was able to catch like, you know, like one of them, but there was another one that I was not able to catch, but I knew that it had some type of substance or significance, just the way that everybody else reacted in the theater. And even though I was not able to relate to that myself, that is something that I do appreciate. And just besides that. I mean, there are a ton of cameos in this movie and callbacks to the previous, to this uh, new trilogy, to the Clone Wars, or even the original trilogy that I did appreciate. And, you know, with that being said is you also hear a lot of people saying that this fan, this film has a ton of fan service, fan service here, fan service there. Yes, there is a lot of fan service in this movie, but at the same time, it works. It's earned. OK, I don't want the director, J.J. Abrams, just to be checking off of a box just to make people happy, you know, and he did do that. But as long as it works and it flows and it's earned, I am perfectly OK with it. And I thought that every single bit of fan service that he put into this movie movie uh flowed it, it, it was perfect it you know it was cohesive you know i didn't feel that it was forced i didn't feel that it was shoehorned and that's just something else that i did appreciate as a fan and some of the fan service and cameos uh, were just some things that i just did not expect some of them were obvious but at the same time i thought it all worked Another great thing in this film is the action. OK, of course, we got some nice um, some nice lightsaber battles. We got some nice chase scenes. We got, you know, the stormtroopers actually have better aim in this movie because it's a running joke. If you know Star Wars that, you know, you cannot they, they can't hit anything. I mean, you know, if, if, if they're a stormtrooper, they can't hit water if they're falling out of a boat or something like that. I mean, it's just ridiculous how bad their aim is. And, you know, I'm not saying that they're just some sharpshooter you know for metal gear or something like that in this movie but you know they did step it up just a little bit as far as their tactics are concerned you know and their ability to hit a target and that is just kind of something that i i liked also lightsaber battles i mean come on guys everybody loves a great lightsaber battle and me personally from a subjective point of view you know i grew up loving martial arts and great choreography whether it's hand to hand or whether you're using weapons and so when you have laser swords lightsabers going you know back and forth clashing i thought it was dope as hell especially the scene that is in the trailer to where it's showing kylo ren 
and um and Daisy Ridley's character uh Ray, you know, fighting with all the water surrounding them. It kind of seems like in the trailer they're going in slow mo, but when you actually see it in the film, it's very intense. And then the score that complements the scene by the legendary John Williams, it just kind of puts it up on that upper echelon level of epic badassness that you go to the theater and you want to see. Because for me, that was personally one of the better. It wasn't the best scene in the movie, but it was just one of the highlights, you know, of the movie to me. Where I was like, okay, man, they are really going at it or whatever. And then during the badass lightsaber battle, what I'm talking about right here, there was also great displays of the Force that I can honestly say. I mean, we we see the Force in every Star Wars movie, but the way that the Force was used in this movie also combined with the lightsaber battles. I was I, I'm sitting in my seat like ah, I like that. That's kind of cool. I like that. I can't wait to talk about this on full. Uh, 4k blu-ray so i'm gonna watch this particular scene over and over and over again now there is something about well no i don't want to say that because that's you know going to spoil something here but as far as the action i like the chase scenes i like the gun battles you know i like them flying in space and i like the lightsaber battles now uh something else that i oh let me go back to the use of the force because yes that that was super dope in this movie the use of the force uh i mean from the very beginning it is very clear and obvious that kylo ren has been training and meditating and his force power is like whoa and the same thing with ray going back to her training there they are doing some stuff with the again where i'm like ah i like that oh snap ray i didn't think you had it in you you know what i'm saying y'all are really going at it i don't want to spoil it but it, it was cool like it was one point in the movie where ray was doing something in in you know uh with the force and people were like gasping and they're like oh oh snap oh shit oh and i was one of them and the reason why i have to put it to you that way is because i went to um i went to a, a critics only screening and just the only i'm not trying to sound obnoxious when i say that it's just that the audience reaction is very different from a all critic screening to a critics and audience screening to just a regular movie you know experience that everybody goes to or whatever when you go to a critic screening or a press screening for the most part people are quiet and they they don't just really cheer and emote or anything like that but there are a few moments in this film like i said where like oh my goodness gracious oh okay da 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 da, da. and so that's just a testament just to kind of just show you know how badass the force was you know in this movie uh now another great thing that I, i'm getting all the good out the way another great thing i liked about this movie or loved about this movie is the relationship between kylo ren and ray the dynamic between them i thought was super dope and we saw that in the last jedi one of the things i did like about the last jedi was kylo ren's uh sports power in the way that he's able to communicate with ray across the galaxy uh you know like read no, i'm not necessarily reading her mind or their mind but they're just able to communicate you know from far reaches of the space using the force or whatever of course they do that in this film as well but they take it up another level and i just thought it was like super dope and just kind of just shows you i don't know how much time has passed from the last jedi to the rise of skywalker but i just i i thought it, I, I loved it okay I, i'm just gonna say that I, I was like man and then the way that um the, the just the way that they edited the film and was kind of flashing back to this scene to this scene showing the connection that these two had within the force i'm like i'm smiling again like man i really like what you're doing right here this is just like another highlight of the film that i'm really loving and something that i've never seen in a star wars movie before now um in the force awakens episode seven or also episode eight you know, they kind of teased you with as far as who is Ray really? What is her backstory? Is she related to this character? Is she related to this character? They do answer that question. Um, you know, they don't even shy away from it. They do answer that question where Ray comes from. Am I completely satisfied with the answer? Dang near. OK, there's something with the timeline to where I'm just like, OK, if this is the case, I don't, I can't spoil it for you here, but I'm just like, the timeline may not just add up just all the way, but at the same time, I, I'll just say that I, I am not disappointed with the relationship, okay? I'll just say that who she is related to, I am not disappointed with that. I just kind of wish they could have, you know, broken down the timeline a little bit better because that really just doesn't make any sense to me, you know, but hey, it, it is what it is. No film is perfect. 
Another great thing about this movie is it's funny. Okay, I was laughing throughout this whole movie, uh, from beginning to end with joy and then with with joy with <laughs> with the joys. Um, also with Finn and Poe kind of going back and forth, you know, with their silly banter and all that. You know, that is something I liked as well that the film is funny. Uh, a character that I, I mean, he's cool. I really never cared for him before. Uh, I mean, he, he's cool. It's C three PO. Okay. But C-3PO actually had a scene in this movie, a line of dialogue that's in the trailer. But when you actually see it in the movie and you see the context that's behind it, I was like, wow, that is a nice, heartwarming, touching moment right there that really stood out to me. I just had to mention to you guys. So, you know, that's just a great thing right there. And another reason why, and I keep looking down, I, I wrote a whole bunch of notes. I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't forget anything, but that was a great moment right there. As far as uh, BB-8, I mean, BB-8 is there. I mean, he was cute in The Force Awakens, but, you know, I mean, he wasn't bad in this movie. He really didn't do anything for me. Um, the plot is very, you know, it's, it's a simple plot, very straightforward. It flows, like I said, so uh, that, that's great. Oh, God, I gotta mention this, something that else that I, I like is you know we got a little bit more sprinkles of black people in this movie i mean my goodness out of the whole galaxy it's just nice to know that there are only two or three people two or three black people in the whole galaxy so there was a little just not not that much so don't get it don't get too excited but there was like a couple of more black people in this film i was like oh black people they look like me i can relate you know what i'm saying it's a black woman with, with, with wavy hair <laughs> I, I'm being silly, but at the same time, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being, uh, I'm being silly, but I'm being serious at the same time. I'm just being honest or whatever. When, when they, when a couple of them popped up, I was shocked. I was like, oh, snap, you know, black people are not extinct. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's more than Finn and Lando or whatever. And, and Lando was cool in this movie too. Um, uh, but no, let's, let's, let's move on. Um, something, uh, the, the, uh, the presence of the emperor, we all know that the emperor is back to back and, um, you know, he 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 is like the ultimate badass, the ultimate evil Sith Lord, excuse me, Sith Lord. And um, I love this presence. I love this power. And I'm over talking about, you know, the use of the force and how Ray and Kylo Ren, you know, souped up their power and powered up. I mean, my, my the, 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 the emperor been back chilling, meditating for I don't know how long. Just, oh, I got to get the power. I mean, like, seriously, this dude, man, he was powerful as hell or whatever. You know what I'm saying? He can do Snoke like that. You know, Snoke was powerful, but man, but good. He's the ultimate bad guy. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I liked him. I was like, this dude here can can blink and destroy a planet if he wanted to, the way, you know, how powerful he is or whatever. Also, I mean, there was some nice uh, surprise in this film with, you know, characters, you know, whether you think they're good or they're bad and switching sides and, and, and things, you know, of that nature. And I kind of just like also how the plot tricked me in this movie because while it, it teases you, because there was some time when I was talking about the Force earlier, especially with Kylo Ren, I was saying to myself, okay, wait, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This don't make no sense. How are you able to do this with the force? But then you're not able to do all oh, not able to do this. And I was like, oh, OK, I see what you're doing. You know, that makes sense. Or, you know, there was something with the plot. So I'm like, oh, no, I don't like what you're doing with this character. And then like 30 seconds later, I'm like, oh, OK, you're tricking me again. I like what you're doing with this. I like what you're doing with this. And also, I mean, I like to where I, it just whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, as far as the plot is concerned. I want everybody putting their pride aside, putting their ego aside, and just trying to seize the moment and get the job done. So if they're like, hey, we found the resistance. They're over here in this city right here. Instead of being stupid and saying like, okay, let's go look for them, you have some characters who are like, okay, let's just blow up the whole city. Let's just blow up the whole planet to make sure we destroy them. That makes sense, okay? I mean, you're evil anyway, and so I want to see how evil you can be. And, you know, they, they kind of play with that plot element there. And, you know, that would have bugged me if they didn't do that. So I just like it when people are using their, their common, their common sense, their, their logic, you know, to accomplish their goal or whatever, you know. So, you know, the editing is great in this film. And also, uh, you know, Jay, like I said, with the fan service, it was blatantly obvious, like J.J. Abrams was like, OK, everybody's pissed off with what Ryan Johnson did. Well, I don't want to say everybody, but a lot of people are pissed off with uh what ryan johnson did uh with the last jedi and so jj abrams came in here and i don't want to just say necessarily he retconned it but he just tried to fix as much as possible and just give fans and just casual fans what they wanted and i think he succeeded there it's obvious that he was checking off boxes you know and trying to wrap everything up but i think it worked 
And so, guys, that is all I have to say about the good. Now, let's go ahead and get into the bad. And it's not that much. It's not that much. The first thing, and I talked about this in my uh, reaction video. That's about two minutes long. Was a character that really annoyed me. Oh, hold on. No, there was something else that, I, that was about the good. When it comes to um, Finn and Poe, they're supporting characters. And, I mean, you can, some may say they're leading characters, but they're leading supporting characters. Ray and Kylo Ren are the main ones. While they were trying to protect Ray and all that good stuff, I liked the fact that the film took a brief moment to focus on them and what is important to them, kind of where they come from, especially with Paul Dameron, and also it kind of focused on Finn just a little bit and where he came from and his life as he was a stormtrooper. And, you know, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but they did take a brief moment, a brief scene or two to kind of flesh that out as far as their character development. And I loved I loved everything about that. So I just had to make sure I mentioned that as well. So while I let's talk about the bad. While I just said something good about uh, Finn, he is the character that annoyed me the most. In my reaction video, someone made a comment was like, man, all Finn does is buck his eyes and scream. I laughed my ass off when I read that because that's true. All he does is Ray! Ray! Ah! He does that throughout the whole dang movie. And I'm like, dude, will you please just sit down somewhere and shut the hell up? It is annoying. Like, stop it. You did that all through Force Awakens and you was doing this in this movie here. I mean, I know that you care about Ray. And that, you know, y'all a team and you want everybody to succeed and you want to, you don't want to leave no man behind or woman behind. But my goodness gracious, just this blind loyalty, this blind love that he has this has for this character that he just really doesn't know. I don't like it. It really annoys me. Uh, it, it, it really does. And I do not like the symbolism behind that. Now, I'm about to say something that may piss some of y'all off. And look, it is what it is. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to give you my unbiased, honest opinion. As a black man, look, if you love who you love, I, you love who you love. Okay, I'm not going to judge nobody if you truly love somebody. But he is not just in love with this Ray character. He is like obsessed with her. Like he wants to drink her bath water type stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it would be different if the feeling was mutual. But it's not. I mean, it's like he loves her and she has no idea that he has these type of feelings for her. And just me as a black man, that really pisses me off because it's just the symbolism that's behind that. Because, you know, going into American history. It was illegal for one, once upon a time for a black person to marry a white person. You know, we got, you know, we would get hanged from trees and stuff like that. And yes, I'm talking about that in the Disney, Disney movie. I don't care. It affects me. And we got punished for that and killed for that. And it just, it, it was like a, a forbidden thing. So for them to kind of just infuse that into this movie here and the symbolism behind that, it really just, it, it pisses me off. If the feelings was mutual, I would not care. Or if there was some more development in the past films that could warrant his blind love for her, that would be okay. But it's just, he's they're, they're putting it in the movie for no reason at all. I don't understand where it's coming from. And it really bugged me. I mean, he's screaming her name when she's trying to fight. I'm like, like dude, shut up. She's trying to concentrate and use the force. And you, hey! you are a distraction. And you please just drown yourself. That's just how I felt. And that was really the, one of the things that I hated the most in this movie um the next thing that i really didn't care for uh is the while i love the film from beginning to end for the most part the ending of it was a little bit anticlimactic for me i wanted a little bit more from it i mean if this is episode nine wrapping up the skywalker trilogy and all that i mean and just me as a martial arts fan like i said before I want some super duper badass choreographed hand to hand lightsaber battle. And we didn't get that. We got a little bit, but I just thought they could have drawn it out more. And then like when they're rallying the troops for the final showdown or whatever, when you're like, oh snap, it's going down. We here, we here. You know, I just going to say to yourself, don't think like that. Just calm yourself down. It's cool. It's good. But I just feel like we could have got more. We could have, uh, they could have uh, drawn it out a bit more. The setup is great, but the execution just did not come through as hard as I wanted it to be. And I'll also go ahead and say that with uh, Avengers Endgame. I love the film. I thought it was great. And I love the setup of the ending battle. But there were just too many characters at the end of Endgame that just really didn't do anything on the battlefield. You know, I, I wanted like at least 20, 30 more minutes of action. You know, and uh, I don't want to say I wanted 20 or 30 minutes more of action in this film, maybe about five or 10 minutes. But, 
you know, I, I, I just feel that they could have gotten more. But at the same time, the use of the force was still uh, badass. Um, something else that um, I really just did not like was while I said the film was funny, there was just a little sprinkles here and there that I thought that the film was just a little bit too jokey. Um, you know, okay, like guys, take it seriously. You know, get away from the funny moments and the jokes. But you know, that's just that's just nitpicking right there. And the last thing that I I uh, that really bugged me about the film is the emperor is back, and while I love his presence, I do not like the explanation. I'll just say that um, I did not like the explanation, and so uh, that leads me at that going over the bad and the good. But something that spoke to me personally from a subjective standpoint is. One of the the themes in this movie, especially in the end, well, I said, I, you know, the, the like the movie was not disappointing to me. The ending battle was, but the final conclusion right before the credits hit, I was fine with that. And I do like the title of the movie, the Star Wars, the Rise of Skywalker. There is some significance and substance to that. However, but one of the things that I really did love at the end is just the theme that don't give up, you know, fight for what you believe in. You know, me personally in real life, am I ready to die right now? No, hell no. I, I love life and I want to live to 100 if I possibly can, you know, if I'm healthy, you know, but I am willing to die for what I believe in, you know what I'm saying, for true justice. And that was a running theme at the end of this movie that I, that really, you know, just trying to touch me on a personal level. And I'm just like, man, that's what's up. You know, we, we have this resistance, you know, that just doesn't want to battle evil, you know. And when all hope seems lost, you know, when there seems like there's just no chance in the world, you know, that you're going to win and come out on top, you know, hey, I'm just still going to give it all I got. You know, that's just one of the reasons why I love Goku and Dragon Ball Z is because he just never gives up. And that's just my personal code right there. You may not be able to relate to that. And that's perfectly fine. But that's just me, guys. That's just me. So if I had to rate Star Wars, the rise of Skywalker out of a one out of before I, <laughs> out of one out of ten, before I give you my rating, um, I have to be honest with you guys with The Force Awakens and uh, The Last Jedi. I was on the high when I saw the movie and, um, you know, gave my rating just like, you know, I, it, it, you kind of felt like you was obligated to say it was good and just ignore all the bad. I'm not doing that here. I thought long and hard about this. So if I had to rate Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker out of a one out of ten. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Yes, an 8 out of 10. And again, I do. I probably give The Force Awakens about a 7 now. And I probably give like The the Last Jedi maybe like a 5.5 .5 or a 6 or something like that out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you um you know like the video, please go ahead and give me the thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel. I just hit 17,000 subscribers. I know that's still very small in the YouTube space. So help me reach 20,000 subscribers. I want to hit 20K by the end of the year so I can start the year 2020, the new decade, with 20,000 subscribers. That would just be amazing and that would just be so dope. Again, guys, uh, please look me up on social media. I got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. I also have links in the description box and the pinned comments. All you got to do is just click on the link and then click the follow button. It's that easy and you're helping your boy out. At least help me reach 1,000 followers on Instagram. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in for my opinion slash review for The Rise of Skywalker. And before you go, don't forget to always chase your dreams because I'm chasing mine. My name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.